Now in the first video introducing the basic concepts of modal logic, we looked at the notion of truth in all possible worlds, and we defined that as necessity. Possibility, correspondingly, is defined as truth in at least one possible world, and so our modal operators behave like quantifiers. But there's more fun and more interesting stuff we can do, especially if we start talking not just about possible worlds across the board, but collections of worlds and their accessibility relations to each other. Just for the sake of understanding this concept, define possibility as conceivability, and then say that what's necessary is what's true in every world that, say, I can conceive. But what about the thinkers in those worlds? Can they conceive of further worlds? And if they can conceive of them, can I conceive of them as well? That is to say, is the accessibility or conceivability relation transitive? If world A has access to B and B has access to C, then does world A have access to C? This video just sets out how these accessibility relations work, gives a few examples of them, and shows how we get these axioms out of them. Take this little dot here to be the world, and take this crudely drawn stick figure to be you or me. Now we've already seen that we define necessity as truth in all possible worlds, and we've defined possibility as truth in at least one possible world. But now we can make some more general claims about these possible worlds in terms of their relations. So take these dots to be possible worlds. And let's say you have the accessibility relation. You can conceive of them or however you want to construe this relation, which we'll draw as arrows. I'm just going to give these all letters. So let's take B to be a world in which there are talking ducks. So we can say there exists a Y duck and is a talker. Well, then this is actually true in this world, and since it's accessible from our world back here, it's true thanks to B that it's possible that there are talking ducks. But what about these worlds and what can they access? Well, suppose that C can access another world F. If, supposing that for any world that any of these worlds can access, our world can access that one too, then our model is transitive. We can make this notion more rigorous by adding a predicate to our language that tells us that a world accesses another world. So for instance, let's name our world world star. So calling our world star here, we can say that in a transitive frame, if star is related to a world C, and moreover C is related to a world F, then star is related to F. That is to say that our R here, our R relation, is transitive. More generally, we can say that transitivity holds where, for any worlds, we'll just say for all W, U, and V, if W is related to U and U is related to V, then W is related to V. Why does this matter? Well, if we define necessity as true in all possible worlds, then this gets us that necessarily A gives us that necessarily, necessarily A. So if it's true in all possible worlds that we can access, it's true in all possible worlds that the worlds we can access can access. You might have doubts about whether necessarily A entailing necessarily, necessarily A really says all that much. But let's think about what happens if we add reflexivity to our relations as well. So we'd say reflexivity holds where, quite simply, every world sees itself. So is it true that our world sees itself? Well, if so, if it has this reflexivity relation, this gets us that whatever holds in all worlds holds in our world. So this gets us the axiom necessarily A entails A, actually A. This is a very exciting rule. It's sometimes called rule M. And we'll see how it works in other systems, notably those built off of M. This one up here is rule 4 because it figures prominently in a system called S4, which we'll look at in a later video. The point that I want to just get across in this video is that by adopting these conditions on frames, that is to say on our accessibility relations, these arrows pointing to the different worlds, we get these different axioms in our system. Because looking again at M, if A is true in all possible worlds and the actual world is included in our frame, then it's actually true that A holds in our world. Now that we've introduced this notion informally, we can look more closely at how these conditions on frames allow us to build up a modal logic. Basically what we do is we start off with a very basic modal logic called K, named after Saul Kripke, and then we modify R 
the accessibility relation or conceivability or what worlds can see other worlds, the conditions like transitivity, reflexivity, and so forth to get as many modal axioms as we please. So coming up, we'll see some actual systems and the ways that these work based on these different conditions on frames. But the point I just want to get across in this video is that it's conditions on frames that gets us these axioms. And we've seen that by considering two conditions on frames, transitivity and reflexivity, which get us these axioms 4 and m.